We're continuing our studies in Chapter 6, How Enzymes Work, and in this lesson we want to see some other effects that enzymes have. We saw in previous lessons that all enzymes work by lowering the activation energy and making it more likely that we'll form more product per unit time. In other words, they lower the energy of the transition state. They stabilize the intermediate. But we see they have other effects as well, and that's illustrated in this figure from your book. In part A, we have reactants here that have to bump into each other through simple diffusion in order for the reaction to occur in the absence of the enzyme. However, in part B, in the presence of the enzyme, the enzyme, as it were, provides a platform so that we can bring these reactants or substrates together. That's the proximity effect, so that they're close to one another. But there are also orientation effects. We're going to position them with respect to one another so that we can facilitate the chemistry that's going to occur. And so enzymes help with this process as well. It often involves conformational changes. And that's very well illustrated in the case of hexokinase. This is an enzyme that catalyzes the transfer of a phosphate from ATP to glucose to form glucose 6-phosphate, as illustrated on the upper left here. This is the first reaction in glycolysis. In the figure on your right, we have the space-filling model of hexokinase in blue. On the left portion of this panel, you'll see here's the hexokinase. You can see the active site here as if it has its mouth open ready to receive the substrate, which is glucose in red. Once it binds that substrate, and that's the right portion of our panel here, there's a conformational change in the enzyme and it closes down over that substrate. This is called the induced fit model because the binding of substrate induces this conformational change. This helps to position the ATP for easy transfer of that phosphate group to glucose. It also provides a protected environment for this phosphorylation. It's as if the hexokinase closes its arms so tightly around that glucose and ATP substrates that there's no room for anything else. In other words, not even water can get in. And in this case, that is very important. ATP can be spontaneously hydrolyzed to release inorganic phosphate and ADP. Note, if this occurs, we have not been successful. We've not transferred that phosphate to glucose. We've just broken a bond without actually carrying out the chemistry we're interested in. And so it becomes important that we exclude water so that we don't have this competition for the actual catalytic reaction we want to carry out. We also find for many substrates, and that's certainly true for all carbohydrates like glucose, they have many OH groups, and so they're very highly hydrated. If we, in the absence of this conformational change, in order to carry out the chemistry, we'd have to rearrange all of those uh, water molecules so that we could get to the atoms and perform the chemistry we want to perform. But by causing this induced fit, by closing down over the substrate and essentially forcing out the water, now we no longer have the energy barrier that we need to rearrange those solvent molecules. And so it's eliminated that problem for us as well. This is referred to as electrostatic catalysis. In other words, the electrostatic interactions are more pronounced in the absence of water. In this case, you want to remember that water has a high dielectric constant. That is, it's a charge insulator. And so if, in order to carry out the reaction, you have to have those electrostatic interactions, you can't afford to have water present because it will insulate those charges and make the reaction less likely to happen. And that's why it's referred to as electrostatic catalysis. So in all of these ways, enzymes help to facilitate reactions. They always lower the energy of the transition state, but they also position and orient the substrate so that the reaction occurs and many times eliminate other substances that might interfere. In our next and last video lecture on Chapter 6, we want to see how chymotrypsin becomes activated.